Buonasera, benvenuti, uh, welcome to uh, Linea Pelle, uh, I am Loreto Di Rienzo, uh, Technology Ambassador uh, of the, the, uh, the House uh, by Diluan. Uh, the House by Diluan is one urban laboratory in uh, Milano, is born two years ago uh, from the, um, the factory, Bon Factory and we have experience uh, uh, about the application of the technology. Uh, uh, today, uh, in, in the house, we have uh, different partners. I involved in the project of the house different partners, uh, Stratasys, uh, 3D print, uh, Framis uh, is thermo-welded, Colorill is embroidery, uh, Universal Robot, uh, and we involve the material partner, for example, Linea Pelle, for example, Vulmar Company. And the focus is R&D, research and development, is evolve the, evolve the technologies and is the sustainable, sustainability. Uh, we work up the different type of project because uh, we, are, we are one uh, manufacturing and when we speak about the technology, it's very important. We think uh, about all process, from the idea uh, uh, to the uh, organize the project, the sample and production. This is very important. Follow all procedure, all process. Today we uh, want indicate. We want uh, uh, try to understand with the the partner, what I, uh, we involved, uh, we, uh, how the technology is possible help for the uh, customization. Customization is the, the one process uh, uh, very important in the sustainable approach because uh, 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 technology help for uh, apply up the, the garment or the accessory in the end of the process. And this permitted personalized. Allora, today uh, I want to introduce the Framis Italia. Andrea Rebonato is marketing and product development, uh, no so bonding technology, and uh, the responsible way uh, to customize and uh, um, revamp shoes and garment. Stratasis, Enrico Toson, Regional Marketing Manager, 3D Print Technology, uh, to enable the customization of material of, of product. And uh, uh, Universal Robot, uh, Paolo Bassetti, Technical Support Engineer, uh, the use of uh, collaborative robot in fashion. Uh, <coughs> I want to first uh, give the, uh, uh, the microphone. <laughs> I'll take off the, the mask. Okay, thank you, Loreto. Thanks also to Linea Pelle for inviting us at this event to present you uh, what the Nozo Bondi technology can do for help uh, brands and designers to customize and to make a responsible approach to uh, garments or to revamp and to uh, customize all these things. Um, basically, everything starts, started more than 40 years ago. During the 80s, it was the first experimentation with the bonding technology. Well, what is the bonding technology? Is a solution that helps you to uh, customize, embellish, or even manufacture a garments or a bag or an accessory, a shoe, without using any stitching at all. It uh, works basically using a um, adhesive, so a chemical component, and on the other side, using a um, technology, a heat press or a thermo welding machine, in order to be able to apply and to use this uh, adhesive with the material. In the 80s, it was it had mainly a functional uh, reason. It was used to restore the waterproofness on garments, uh, on uh, boots, on tent, on technical or outdoor gears. But now it has become more and more uh, familiar or uh, usual in many other applications. 
in this constant in this uh, context framis is uh, has always been playing a fundamental role with his nozo technology nozo is one of the brand of our company and uh, basically as i was explaining to you before there are two sides in the using the bonding technology one side is the chemical part the film the tape uh, the part that needs to be applied on the garment on the other there is the machine or the technology we are the only company worldwide able to offer a solution that is integrated. We have one division that is working on the uh, consumable part, so film, tapes, etc., and another division that is working on the engineering part, so machine, heat press, etc. The two things together makes a um, unique system that is able really to satisfy the needs of the customer and to be able to uh, be very close to his uh, goal or his uh, uh, target. One side, one part I was explaining to you is made with uh, thermo welding uh, films and tapes. And basically, you can use it uh, or them to decorate a garment or accessory or a, a shoe, or you can use it to manufacture it. So you don't use stitching, but you bond together the fabric in order to achieve a uh, construction without any stitching, any hole, any thread. On the other side, we have the machine. So the way to industrialize and to make uh, in continuous this process that was born or it is very common on a flat and very um, on a shape, so on a, on, a, on a flat surface. But with the machine, you are able to have a more continuous and more industrial way to approach this technology. What you can do with, this com with the combination of the uh, film tapes on one side and the applic applicative technology on the other. You have mainly three areas where you can work or you can use the technology. On one side, you have the decorative part. You can use it to tape, to embellish, to create label, to apply label, to, cast to put customized shapes on garments, etc. The second part is more functional. When uh, the, the technology was born 40 years ago, it was mainly for restoring the uh, seam sealing on uh, garments. Now it, it has other functional aspects such as reinforcement, compression, uh, waterproofing, etc. that make, helps the garments or the shoe or the accessory to become more functional. And third, there is the structural. It means building and manufacturing the garments or the shoe or the accessory or any, any, any um, apparel things without using any stitching. From the, the 80s to now, the technology has evolved a lot. And now is helping, and we are helping a lot of designer brands uh, and companies to develop solutions that are very uh, innovative and also creative. So besides being able to substitute the, the stitching, we can also add something that you can achieve with other technology in terms of decoration, in terms of construction, in terms of combination of the two, in terms of, in terms of opportunity and possibility for the designer. One thing that is pretty is even more important for us is also to be able to go down during uh, along the supply chain and be able to offer a solution that even, is even more close to the needs of the customer. Once what we produced were, was mainly a film or a tape that was okay available in many colors that could, could be used in many applications, but now we are able to offer something that is much closer in terms of decoration, embellishment, labeling, logo, etc. These are some examples that has been used uh, uh, from, some, from some of our customers to decorate their garments. One aspect that it is uh, maybe, maybe common to some of you is that to use a thermo welding product, you need a flat surface and a heat press to transfer the, to um, make the glue or the adhesive to uh, become to melt down and to be applied and to bond to the garment or to the, to the um, fabric. The challenge for us was now to be able to work not only on a flat surface or with common taping solution, but to be able to work also with a 3D uh, part. For example, a finished garment, a finished shoes, or an accessory that is already built and maybe is there and needs just to be customized. So the goal was to be able to take a, a piece of garment, in this case, a denim jacket, and decorate it without using any stitching and 
in any case, using a following the shape of the garment. So we are able to work along the sleeve, under the, the armpits, uh, in many parts that are not only and exclusively flat surfaces. This was a very challenging uh, uh, point for us, and thanks to a, ser a series of innovation and collaboration also with the house, we are here presenting you some solution to work on a 3D garments and shoes using our decorative solutions. At the end, what you will see uh, when you move there, but I have here some pictures, is that you can work on uh, any kind of uh, um, t-shirt, jacket solution that needs uh, to, uh, that is not flat, but needs to be uh, followed in certain shapes in order to not uh, affect the, 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 the design of the garments or the pers performance or its aspect. In this situation, we are taping uh, with one of our tape one uh, uh, sweater. And the solution you can see there is very, very nice, it's very beautiful. Uh, you're able to follow all the shapes and all the, thi all the details of the garments, something that you can't do or you couldn't do until a few years ago with the usual thermal welding technology. But also with our other uh, uh, decorative solution, it's not so easy to do or it's not possible to do. Even shoes, we decided to do something or try to find a solution to uh, customize it as it is. When I say as it is, it means uh, with the shape of a normal shoe. So you're not working with uh, open shoes before uh, finishing it, but you are working on a shoe that you can have there uh, at the end of your uh, uh, sale season, uh, some uh, dead stocks there. You can take your shoes and you can revamp them using the technology. It's something that you can, it's very difficult to do with other solutions. And most important, we want or we wanted to develop a solution that could be industrialized. I mean that it can be, do in, can, can be done in continuous without having a moment where you have to change all the technology or with a very slow production time. But the end, what are the advantages uh, that I tried to explain to you, and now I try to recap in this slide. First of all, using the thermal welding technology and our nozzle technologies, you can uh, work on garment without any need to separate part and stitch it or to uh, open it when it's already uh, manufactured. So you can take anything from your warehouse or anywhere, or even something that is supposed to be produced for a, um, or customized for a final consumer and customized directly as it is. Second, second uh, uh, point is that we are working on a surface. We don't affect at, in any way the fabric. We don't put any thread. We don't, uh, we, we, we don't, um, we don't uh, need any, any hole with a needle. We are just applying on top a solution or a thermal adhesive that bond on the fabric without affecting it. And for certain technical uh, things, it's very important because you are maintaining the performance in terms of waterproofness, etc. And third, you can work on a 3D uh, solution. The machine has been developed to work and to follow the shapes of the garments, of the shoe, of the bag, etc is something that it was very challenging, but we are able and very happy and proud to, to solve or to offer as a solution. Why do we define this solution as responsible? Mainly for the reason you see here. First of all, following the shape of the garment, going directly with a machine that is following the, maybe taping or doing other things directly on the garment, you have basically no waste of material. You are putting exactly where you want it, your material, your decorative tape, your uh, uh, shape, etc., without any waste during the construction or the decoration of uh, the, the garment. At the same time, we are able to offer to our customers a solution to revamp or to not throw away their desktop at the end of the sale season. Imagine uh, that uh, something was not uh, as expected in terms of sales of a certain jacket or a certain uh, garment. Using our solution, you can take them, um, upgrade them with some solution, put some embellishment, uh, make them more uh, up to date to the current uh, uh, trend, and put again uh, in the shops. At the same time, you can uh, sorry, uh, one, two, three, and the, the, the fourth was that 
this solution can also be seen as a solution to be even closer to the needs of the final consumer. We know that uh, now brand, the brands are more and more, um, I can say, um, they pay more and more attention to the needs of their customers. They want to offer a solution that is uh, really very close to their needs in terms of personalization, uh, name, uh, letter, logos, colors, etc. In this case, you can be able to achieve this goal starting or uh, having a standard product in your warehouse or available and working piece by piece using the technology you saw before. So basically, we believe that with this solution, you have one, a very responsible way to approach this market or this, this uh, situation, but at the same time, also a solution that is even more uh, near, closer to the needs of the customers in terms of uh, uh, final consumer in terms of uh, approach or customization to them. And therefore, we are pretty satisfied with the solution that we are able to offer. I'm done. That's it. Thank you very much. Andrea, um, <coughs> it's very important because customization is possible uh, apply up three uh, really uh, type of product the new product the vintage used or is possible apply uh, many everybody know where is the big problem of the storage where is the not sell pieces and technology is the instrument what help for resolve this type of problem now i introduce the second um, <coughs> partner is uh, enrico toson uh, Stratasys Regional Marketing Manager 3D Print technology to uh, enable the customization of material and product. On, yes, okay. So good afternoon also from my side and uh, from Stratasys. And thank you, Dilon, and thank you, Linia Pelle, for allowing us uh, to talk about 3D printing. So first of all, just a quick intro, who is Stratasys? Stratasys has been uh, basically a company who was funded in 1989 and is the company who actually created one of the most widely used uh, technology in 3D printing. So I think you know, it is a synonym of uh, 3D printing. And today we want to explain you, we want to show you what we've been working on for the last few years and actually together with Dilon in bringing 3D printing to fashion and 3D printing directly on fabric, okay? We think this is a great opportunity and, uh, and the partnership with Dilon uh, has been, you know, uh, allowing us to move it into, you know, with, with, the, with the clear objective of moving into production and making a, a, a real uh, production uh, technology. Uh, let me go. Okay, two words about uh, uh, 3D printing uh, in, uh, in fashion. Why is it, is it interesting? I think, uh, number one, I really have you know, three things that I would like to, to, point, uh, to point out. Number one is sustainability. Um, this is intrinsic to 3D printing and additive manufacturing. It is a sustainable technology in itself. Why? I mean, first of all, you only use the material that is needed. There is no waste, no scrap, you know, so it's technology that is very lean, first of all. Second, it allows uh, extremely high levels of customization and personalization. Why? There are no, no economies of scale, so when you 3D print, you can do, you know, 100 products, you know, the same or all of them different from one another, and it's, you know, it's the same. So it really allows you to customize uh, uh, anything you do when uh, when you 3D print. And last but not least is freedom of design. In fashion is all about innovation, is all about creativity. So we do believe that uh, 3D printing really and 3D fashion as we call it allows a new level of creativity, you know, for fashion designers. And I'll try you know to show you some examples uh, of the journey that we've been, you know, doing over the last uh, actually we started in 2013 working with many different designers and hopefully more and more will uh, will come and be working with us. Let me actually start from a video so uh, you can take a look at what I mean with uh, with 3D fashion. Thank you. 
right. So uh, I hope you know that gave you an idea, a glimpse of what it can it can be done. Of course, you know all the things, the the, the technology, the systems, and some printouts you can see here in the booth later on if you wish. But let me let me you know uh, just start where it started. In 2013, we had uh, maybe the first engagement uh, with two designers, Aris van Herpen and Neri Oxman. Uh, Neri Oxman's uh, works are actually at the modern um, at the MoMA in New York. And we started, you know, working with them. As you can see at the beginning, you know, it was not does not really look like a real dress. At the time, we were not still not able to uh, print directly on on fabric, so it, it, it looks like actually we're in a sculpture. Maybe not the most, you know, uh, comfortable kind of uh, uh, of garment. Still, in terms of creativity and design, I think you know it, it's it's quite compelling. Now, when we moved on. <coughs> This is the first time in 2018 when we were able to print on fabric. It was a transparent fabric, but you can see, you know, all the leaves, all the, <coughs> all the, it looks like a sculpture, like like a full dress, that was completely 3D printed. So it was the first time for us that we really had, you know, the, the, for the first time we started uh, uh, printing on uh, <coughs> on fabric, and and that's where you know it all started. So we went on and we started, you know, and the adding color. The technology allows you to really uh, use as many colors as you know. We have uh, 600,000 that we can, uh, you know, manage and print with the with the printers, and uh, I mean we are um, we can do Pantone, for example. And here you see some examples. This is also a, a particular kind of uh, all, all these kind of uh, needles, uh, you know, show the accuracy that the technology can achieve. We're talking about one millimeters wide and three centimeters high, you know, kind of uh, stitching out. Uh, in uh, in the dress, allowing a, a, a pretty peculiar and uh, unique kind of design. Uh, more, this is another one <coughs> that was done uh, with um, you know Greta Otto with 3S4 and uh, Travis Twitch, um, U.S. designers, fashion designers. This again, I mean, it, it's it's um, it's a technology we, we call lenticular. So it allows basically to print each kind of pixel. Think every point you know can. Uh, be seen, you know, with different colors depending on the angle that you, you know, look at. So it has an extremely interesting uh, and uh, changing kind of effect when uh, when you watch this kind of dress. This is again just to show you what the technology allows you to do. And again, you know, it, it's all about creativity. It's all about unleashing, you know, fashion designers' uh, creativity using, you know, 3D printing. And moving forward, again, just a. Uh, this is another one that we did uh, um, with uh, Julia Corner. This was kind of a, a, a urban design, so it was about uh, printing and having projects that could be assembled directly when uh, the garment was supposed to be used. So kind of a design project, again, uh, kind of interesting. Uh, and this is a, a, a denim capsule that uh, shows you what we can do directly, again, for example, on denim, on jeans. The interesting part is that uh, we can play, you know, and, and we use what we call kind of techno materials because with the 3D printer you can simulate not only the colors but pretty much any kind of uh, textures or different, uh, you know, kind of uh, materials. So you can simulate uh, wood, uh, you can simulate marble in any color, in, in kind of also in different what we call shores. So we can, it can be soft or it can be hard depending on, you know, what, uh, what your aim is. You can do pretty much, you know, any, any way you like it. And, and you see the kind of effect that, that it can be achieved. Okay, this is another one. Um, I think it's, uh, uh, yeah, Gennie Goldstein. This is a, this is a kind of a, a Japanese kimono. And, uh, and here we've been mixing two different technologies. So it's 3D printing, but also traditional embroidery, which I think is kind of unique because uh, uh, the objective was to see or was to show that we can basically mix and match different technologies uh, and uh, and use 3d printing you know to achieve the same levels of uh, of, of artisanship and uh, and uh, you know that you can have uh, on uh, on more traditional technologies like uh, like embroidery um, but I think you know it speaks pretty much on itself uh, and uh, and it's uh, you know quite a, quite an interesting realization this is a more traditional one you know sometimes uh, we say they, you know they tell us uh, well you know it's all about you know showing new things kind of uh, 
uh, crazy disruptive things. This is also something that actually mimics more traditional kind of uh, you know patterns. Uh, this is where the letter and uh, any that is that basically you know the 3D printing technology can be used in pretty much any you know any kind of uh, you know where you, you, you want basically you know you can mix and match. You can be more open, traditional, or disruptive, whatever you know you feel uh, that uh, you know you want to achieve. This is, uh, again, a project from last year. Um, I think uh, <laughs> the team from Delon with Smile, it was done together, you know, with them, Delon, uh, and um, the, eh? and Laura, okay. <laughs> Loretta knows much better than, uh, than myself. Um, and this is, again, for me, it was quite amazing. You know, everybody was been, you know, seeing uh, this realization, was really amazed uh, at the kind of mixing, actually, of, uh, again, different fabrics, uh, mixes, uh, and uh, and the results basically. This is another one, still uh, again with Delon and the Walmart company, and you see uh, what was achieved. You know, kind of unique things uh, that cannot really be made in, with any other you know technology. And uh, and of course, I think it's it's a journey that we're starting. And you know, the more fashion designers get to you know the te know the technology and how to use it, the more you know incredible things you know we will see uh, coming out from uh, you know from their hands and their minds. This is something that you know you can see here at the at the booth you know behind me you know some of the buttons uh, because of course you know the technology can be used also for example in fashion accessories or can be used uh, for personalizing existing garments like you know this pair of jeans and uh, and this is something also interesting you know about uh, uh, refreshing your wardrobe for example so it has uh, a lot of different uh, uh, possibilities and opportunities and that that's part of the tiger the tiger is also uh, printed over there and visible at the show. Quite impressive, so you know, stop by and take a look if you wish. Um, this is how you know how it looks like. Basically, it, it prints directly on fabric, as, as you can see. Comes you know out of the printer like that, just to give you an, an idea. Again, uh, the, the printer you know uh, is uh, is uh, printing live right now. So if you're interested, you can stop by and take a look yourself. Um, of course, we don't stop, you know, to, to garments and, and fabric. Of course, you know, that can be used, especially when we talk about leather. It can be used with shoes, of course, with bags, with fashion accessories. So there is a, you know, a whole set of uh, uh, different opportunities that we can uh, basically work with 3D fashion, you know, out there. Now, let me quickly move to, towards the end and talk a little bit, you know, at the underlying technology, just to give you a better understanding of what it is and how it works. In set, uh, you know, of applications I already, you know, spoke, you know, uh, it's definitely about shoes, it's about garments, it's about bags. We have examples, uh, we've seen incredible things already, uh, actually developed by Delon, but some of their customers, of the Delon customers. Uh, uh, of course, we cannot maybe mention some of them, but uh, it has been already achieving some, some interesting results. Um, you can print on ribbons, you can print on, uh, you know, um, on just plain fabric. Uh, uh, and you can, of course, you know, work on just decorative or uh, different things. And in terms of uh, the, the kind of fabric that we support, we've been extensively working with cotton, with linen, with polyesters, and also with leather, sweat leathers and normal leather. It depends. Usually, you know, we, we do all, all sorts of tests, but uh, the technology is, is pretty, uh, I would like say, flexible in, in, the time, in the type of materials that is able, to, you know, to print on. I think what is important, and I want to stress that, and this has been really the, the core of the partnership with Delon, our objective as Stratus is, is to make the technology a production technology. So, I mean, we have 30 years, uh, or more than 30 years of experience working with the leading companies in the world. You know, we have uh, uh, parts of uh, rockets in the space that, you know, use parts printed with our technology. So we know what it means to be mission critical, what a production environment is. We want to work, you know, with a partner like Delon, to make sure that we understand, uh, you know, the fashion industry and uh, you know how, and how a production its production works, and make sure that our technology is, you know, fully compliant and also, you know, as fast as needed and as productive as needed. In terms of technology, <coughs> it's really kind of an inkjet technology, the one that we've been using. So I think all of us are familiar with 2D, uh, you know, inkjet the technology. It's just you know little droplets uh, that get. Uh, uh, shoot, you know, towards the a sheet of paper. Here, it's not a, a kind of a, a 2D kind of uh, inklet or, or a small drop. It, it is a 3D, you know, drop, small, that we call the voxel. And then, you know, uh, 
drop by drop, basically you're able to build your final design and what you've been seeing before. It, uh, you know, it, it makes different colors, transparencies, uh, or transparent materials and support materials to achieve, you know, what, uh, you know, some of the printouts that we've been seeing before. Just a quick note on, uh, let me say, how it works really, um, the bonding between the resins and the underlying fabric is a mechanical one. Okay, so we don't do we don't do priming, we don't use chemicals. It's the it's the ink or the resin that you know is liquid, and when it's solidified by a um, by UV light, it basically you know can go you know depending on the porosity of the fabric can go through or you know or stay you know at, at different levels, and we can actually tune it depending on what the the, the effect that, or the strength that we want to achieve. But it's it's a mechanical bonding. Okay between the, uh, the resin, which actually produces the 3D printed part, and the underlying fabric. This is the machine. This has been, uh, we call it uh, right now, you know, the 3D fashion printer. It will be officially announced uh, in a couple of months' time. Um, the technology has been running and used you know, by uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of customers out there since many years. Uh, but again, now we're bringing you know, all of its capacity into, into the fashion and into the you know print on textile and print on fabric you know kind of uh, setup, uh, we have of course uh, um, all the I mean say the the, the the underlying solutions to do you know the interfacing with existing design systems uh, like CAD, the software, uh, and so on. I mentioned you know the colors, uh, I mentioned you know Pantone, and this is also something you know that we've been <coughs> working on for uh, many years now. Mentioned Pantone. This is what you know the kind of cartridges and the that uh, basically allow you to you know to print the basic colors, the transparent, the support, and the black and the white you know cartridges. Getting to the end, um, I mean we're here on on a journey. Okay, so we 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 have a clear roadmap already outlined by the by the business unit. Uh, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, and a set of capabilities that we're working on to bring more and more to the market, new capabilities. Uh, so we're testing and working with different fabrics uh, and keep adding them, uh, new type of resins, looking at sustainability and uh, new formats to, you know, uh, being able to print on larger uh, kind of set of fabrics, uh, increase productivity end to end. So it's not only the throughput of the machine itself, but how, you know, it's repeatability and how it connects uh, into, you know, uh, the different uh, uh, manufacturing environments uh, from a connectivity standpoint, uh, you know, that is expected by, by production, uh, you know, uh, that from a production standpoint. In terms of usability, also make it much easier and faster, you know, calibrations, alignments, uh, and really be, you know, uh, be able to use the machine in a digital workflow as easily as possible. And of course, we're also spending, a, you know, a, 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 or making a lot of effort in, in making it, you know, compliant with the sustainability and certification standards that are out there. I think we're pretty well advanced. I think, you know, we were well aware of, you know, for example, what the top brands are asking for, and uh, we are compliant, I would say, almost 100%, and, uh, and we keep improving. So I think it would be also, you know, from that standpoint, you can rely on us. That's it, so I wanna thank you. Again, I wanna invite you, you know, come to the booth and take a, a real look. Bye-bye. Enrico, uh, it's very interesting how many solutions, how many possibilities the technology give for uh, personalize and give value up the product. Uh, the last, <coughs> the last um, uh, partner uh, is Universal Robot uh, with uh, Paolo B uh, Bassetti. Uh, I want to really understand how it's possible with the robot uh, Customize. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Loreto. Can I have the. Okay. So, just to set the stage, a few words very quickly about Universal Robots, which is a Danish company born 15 years ago. And we basically produce this kind of robots small robots, collaborative robots and um, in four different models, ranging from three kilograms of payload up to 16 kilograms. Usually, we 
uh, are used to see in television and so on, standard robots, the one you see on the left, and we are instead producing collaborative robots. What does it mean? It means that basically, according to the risk assessment, but basically the idea is that, that this kind of robot can be used together with the operator, without fences, without barriers, okay? And the key points of the robots is that uh, they are easy to program, they are very flexible, meaning that they can reach position very easily, and they are also very flexible from an um, application point of view. And also, they are perfect for high, um, high mix, low volume kind of production. So when you have to produce very few elements, let's say very few pieces, and very different one to each other, okay? Basi typically, we have this, sorry, Typically, we use this robot to uh, this kind of application, so um, machine tending, or also skill driving, palletizing, dispensing, quick um, quality control, and whatever. So these are the usually um, applications that we use our robot for. But here, we, I want to introduce you to the use of this robot in the fashion world. This is an application we developed with the Dillon last year in which the robot could pick from here, from this uh, part, uh, this kind of component. It was shapes made by leather, I think. And the robot, through the camera, could recognize the position and also the shape that he's supposed to pick, and so create a pattern, for example, like this, on a specific surface of a, a garment or whatever. Um, in this case, it was not applied or glue, but I can also decide to apply a droplet of glue to fix the, the robot, also because we have here in the robot flange a sensor, a force sensor, through which I can apply a given force, a specified force. Here is another interesting example in which my colleagues on the left was just teaching a sort of spraying application, okay? For example, if you have to you know, spray some sand or something like that on a garment to produce that uh, old-fashioned and used um, characteristics. So the idea is we just take the robot and move it by hand freely, and then the robot on the right repeat the same path, the same shape, and it o can also memorize the moments in which the user had triggered the spray, okay? So it can start and stop the spray according to what the user did. And with this kind of approach, we realized several applications in the in this kind of in industries because uh, uh, you can set up an application like this in 20 minutes, something like that. Okay, so very very easily. Here is another uh, interesting application by Atom Lab, in which they take this uh, shoe sole. Actually, uh, in this case, they were able to let the user select in a 3D environment which kind of sole they liked and which kind of shoe they liked. Uh, there were several colors, several shapes, and so on. So the robot will take the shoe that the customer choose, choose, and assemble it. So it um, position the shoe on the, on the sorry the sole on the shoe, applying some glue with this machine, and so on. And then takes all the shoe complete and put it into the press machine in which it is uh, pressed and uh, heated. Now, in all these examples, what you see is that the robot is very, very easily programmable. So I can adapt what the robot is doing to the specific request of the operator, of the customer, actually. Meaning that, in this case, for example, I can change by a computer, from a computer, according to the specific project, design, idea of the customer, I can change the shape that uh, is produced, how many shapes, which size, and so on. And the robot can recognize where to pick this shape, both by because the, the machine, the cutting machine, tells to the robot where it, where it is, or optionally, through the use of a camera, like in this case, there is a camera on the ceiling that is looking at the table, and then the camera just says to the robot where to pick the part, okay? Here we have another interesting example in which the robot loads this mm, part of uh, fabric, and there is a sewing, sewing machine that uh, is fitted with the robot, as you can see. Again, here I can very easily change, for example, the path that I want to follow, the size of the, I suppose this is a sort of bag, because it sews three different uh, size. And uh, so I can, I can choose what the robot is supposed to do. I can do a sewing 
smaller, bigger, longer, whatever, in real time. Okay, so it's not a machine that is running all the same time, all the time in the same way. I can just change when I like what it's doing. And here is my last example that you can see here in the booth uh, near you. In this case, we are well. We just imported a CAD model of this body shape, and then they created the path of this garment. The idea is this. Okay, that on the left uh, in red is the result. The idea is that here the robot is just following a path, and the path is given in a 3D virtual environment through the CAD. So, but basically it can be adapted in, sev in several ways. I mean, uh, in the future we can also decide to scan the body of the real customer and then change the shape, the decoration, the pattern, the measures, the size of this printing uh, um, uh, path accordingly to the shape, let's say, of the body itself, so to the size of the body, okay? So, again, in this case, it's very, very flexible, very easily programmable, and according to the kind of software that you use, you can achieve results very different and very complex, more or less complex, but basically, in this case, the robot is just holding this printing machine, this printing head, okay? If it's a 3D printing head, and uh, with this, we can uh, um, produce whatever application we want. So, for example, if you want to uh, create a 3D printing, not on a garment, not on a solid structure like this, but for example, like something like a pottery, a vase, okay, you can also do this, given that the material is able to sustain itself. Okay? So, the basic idea is that with this kind of robots, we can just program them to be extremely flexible and adapt to the specific customer needs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paolo. Very interesting, the, the solution, this application. Um, have uh, some question? Because all this technology is in the house, Laboratory Urbano in Milano, and the house help for the uh, project and help for uh, the, product, the production. In the house, every all partner is resident in the house for uh, help and evolving the technology uh, in the direction of the customer, the client uh, uh, want. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, uh, go, it's possible go to see the exhibition uh, just uh, just here. Thank you. Thank you. Come on!